Well, in a summer loaded with new family dramas, how did this show differentiate itself from the rest? Let's find out. Just a quick thing, guys, before I get into this episode, I just want to say that I'm sorry that it took me so long to review this premiere. I meant to review it back on Thursday. I just never got the chance to. I have been working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday almost all day. I haven't had any time. 12 to 5. I'm just booked. I've been very busy. Um... And today, you know, was 12 to 6, and I'm sorry that I haven't been able to review this show. If I had time, I would have too. I would, you know, I would have, but, um, you know... I just didn't have the time, unfortunately, so sorry that it took me so long to review this show, but finally I have reviewed. Let's just get into the episode. Hey guys, can't remember the series premiere of American Gothic, Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, this episode was called The Arrangement in Gray and Black, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode. But also, I wasn't really looking forward to this show, because this summer is loaded with two things. Most of the new shows are either murder mysteries, or some sort of mystery, or they're family dramas. And this show is both of those things. And really, there's been an overabundance of them, I think, this year. There's been, you know, Greenleaf, there's been this, there's been uh, Animal Kingdom, there's been just way too many new family dramas not saying that's necessarily a bad thing it's just i really was wondering how is this show going to be different from the rest and uh overall what i think this first episode this was a really good premiere i really did enjoy this premiere overall is it perfect no i think the show is way too weird than it should be uh but let's just get into this episode because there really is a lot to talk about and uh it's not too different than other shows i've seen i'm not really gonna say this is an original show because it's really not um but let's just get into it, basically. We start off, we see Tessa Ross and her husband, Brady Ross. They're going to meet the rest of the Hawthorne family for a pre-interview because Tessa's sister, Allison, is running for mayor. So, basically, they're stuck in traffic and everything. And just from, they, they see before them, the top of this tunnel just falls down right as they leave it. And it's really weird. I mean, it really just came out of nowhere. And uh, I don't know how this happened exactly. Um, you know, it was, it was just really weird the way that turned out. So obviously, that's a really weird way to start the episode. We then see back at the Hawthorne house, the matriarch, Madeline. She takes down a photo despite her husband, Mitchell, saying that the person in the photo is still part of their family. And we don't know who this person is, but she just takes their photo down. And the rest of the family shows up to the house. It's really uncomfortable because there's so many different members here. And you can really tell they're very out of touch. They don't really talk a lot. And uh, it's just really weird. They're all acting really strange. I mean, you got... Allison and her campaign manager, you have Tessa's whole family, you have, K um, you know, her brother Cam's whole family, I mean, there really are just a lot of people here and a lot of characters we meet, and even the son, holy shit, the son in this episode, Jack, he says super morbid stuff about doing autopsies, and this kid is so weird, honestly, I haven't seen this much of a weirdo kid in a while, this kid is a weirdo, and he's really sick, and let me just say, he's a very good actor, it's the same guy that played Joshua, an outcast and he really does a great job in the show but god damn it is this kid weird seriously i don't think i thought i've seen weird kids so far you know i thought the girl on the whispers was weird this is like the girl on the whispers but much different and i think they showed that really well here so then we see Allison's campaign manager decides that they need to stick a campaign headquarters because the house is just way too extravagant, and she also asks about Jack, Allison's brother Cam, and his wife Sophie met in art, and we basically we find out that Allison's brother Cam and his wife Sophie met in art school and had Jack, and they're getting divorced because Cam's clean, but Sophie's not, and it appears that something might have happened to them, I don't really know, maybe they had drug problems, I'm not really sure, but Tessa and Brady are trying to hook up in the pantry, really awkward scene, I don't know why they did this it was just really strange honestly like you're this is your entire family this is not the time to smash it's really not this is not the time to just get in a closet and hook up it's not the time to do that i don't know why they're doing that but allison then gets a call finds out the tunnel has collapsed and obviously there's something going on there so back at the crime scene police officer finds a belt and a piece of a fallen tunnel brady who's a cop goes to work and the tunnel case and he also calls allison about the belt now they think that it's a silver bells murder weapon and the silver bells killer we find it would strange angle his victims and leave a silver d dinner bell, but the case went cold. So, this killer is very interesting. I haven't really heard of a killer that does this before. They leave a bell after every killing. That's kind of interesting. But, um... 
basically, Allison decides that this could really help her campaign. This could be a real career maker, and she jumps in. Unfortunately, while she's giving her press conference, Mitchell just collapses out of nowhere, and the whole family gathers in the hospital. It's a really big scene. We don't know how this happens, but he just collapses, and Allison thinks that her press conference caused a heart attack or that Mitchell was worried his concrete company caused the collapse, but... I kind of get the sense that there's something else going on, that there obviously has to be another reason why it collapsed, and I think it's completely unrelated to what Allison is thinking it is, so I don't think it has anything to do with that. Um, so basically, we see then the family discusses calling the other son Garrett, but he's completely ditched the family for some reason. Now, we don't know why Garrett's just left the family, but Garrett kind of reminds me of Danny from Bloodline. He's kind of the sibling they don't really want to talk about. He's not really part of the family, and he's definitely a black sheep of the family. And, uh, Sophie shows up wanting to give a relation with Cam another shot, but he says no, and I didn't really care about the scene, honestly. I just don't really care about this couple, uh, to be honest with you, but, um, you know, Justin Chatwin's a great actor, I just didn't really care, but, um, basically, it's interesting what's going on there, Tessa, Tessa then takes matters into her own hands, she leaves a message for Garrett, and Justin and the family finds out that Mitchell's okay, Allison assures him that the collapse wasn't his fault, and that something weird just happened, but we don't really know why this happened, what could have caused it, we have no idea, Cam and Tessa then go back into the house, Tessa sees Cam digging around the shed, she assumes that he's looking for drugs that he's in, and he admits it, so Tessa says she'll help Cam find them and throw them out, and Cam is just your stereotypical junkie at this point, he really just seems like a guy that just, he wants drugs, to so do anything to get drugs, and... I've seen this storyline so many times that I just don't care. I don't care that he has this drug problem. I just don't really care. So while they search through, Tessa does come across a box of silver bells, and we find out that someone in the family is, in fact, the infamous silver bells killer. So now this is a lot more interesting. This is really when the episode starts to get really good, because at this point, I was liking it, but I wasn't loving it. And then at this point, this is where I really started to enjoy this episode, is when we find out the family is silver bell killer, and that's when things just get a lot more interesting. Because right away, they assume the silver bells belong to the house's previous owner before they find one of Cam's cartoons in the box. So they know right away that this definitely is the family. And next, they assume that, Mich that Mitchell was really just into trying, was just really into trying to crack the case. So they decide to talk to their mom in the morning, because maybe it had nothing to do with the fact that they might be the killer. It might just be that maybe someone just really wanted to crack the case. And soon we see they're seeing silver bells everywhere. Really cool device the way this is done. We see really the guilt is looming all over them and it's kind of by seeing these silver bells. Even the shower head looks like a silver bell and uh, meanwhile Jack in the, at this point is just getting creepier and creepier. He's drawing a picture of someone having a heart attack someone getting strangled like the silver bell's deaths and Something is really off about this kid. Now, there's no way that this kid is the Silver Bells killer. He's a little kid. There's no way they do that. If they did that, that'd be one of the dumbest twists there is. And by the way, like I said, he very much is like the girl from The Whispers. Um, you know, kind of reminds me of that. But the question is, how did he know about the Silver Bells deaths? There was info on Mitchell's iPad. Tessa also does some research of her own online because really they want to know what's going on here. How did they know about the Silver Bells killer and what other information can they get from it? So suddenly the doorbell rings and it's one of the most actually, you know, important parts of the episode. We see it's the neighbor looking for a cat caramel. And as the neighbor walks away, though, Tessa sees a strange man in the driveway. And it's none other than her brother, Garrett, who she didn't recognize. And they all drive to the hospital together. Garrett's super cagey. And you can tell right away this guy is very shady, but I'm going to say right now, there's no way that Garrett's the killer, because I think it'd be a lot, way too predictable, because it just doesn't seem like they take the black sheep of the family and make him the killer. It just doesn't seem that way, but he does get a surprisingly warm welcome from Madeline, and Allison's more suspicious, but gets but he gets to meet Allison's daughters, Harper and Violet, and of course, Michelle codes right when Garrett goes up to him, and uh, obviously because, you know, he wants something to do with Garrett, and also because he's kind of scared of him, but back at home, Allison asks Garrett, what do you whisper to their dad? Because we can tell he said something, but we don't know what it is, and she's asking what he said before the alarm went off and Mitchell went into a coma. He said that he was glad to see him and he loved him and it's definitely more than that. You know that definitely it's not just that. He didn't just say, hey, I love you. He's clearly covering up something. Now, what exactly he's covering up, I have no idea, but he's clearly covering up something that's not true at all and uh, definitely there's more going on there. So, basically... The cat lady comes back with flyers while the siblings discuss where Garrett should sleep. He wants to sleep in the shed, which Cam and Tessa are not happy about. And Madeline comes back and says he can have his old room back. So Garrett goes back, he looks at all his old stuff. And Jack comes up to him and says and calls him weird. But it's okay, because he's just as weird. It's a very weird conversation these two are having. They're talking about, like, death and blood and all this stuff. And it's just a really weird scene overall, definitely. I think the show is much weirder than it should be. But Madeline comes in and says, and says, you know, she thought she'd never 
never come back and he says he did but the question is why did he leave what's the real reason there had to be a reason behind why Garrett left and it seems the family doesn't really know why Garrett left so I don't really know what the point you know why he left what really happened there they don't really tell us in this episode and that's definitely something that I'm very interested in so Brady's also working on the case. He tells Tessa that they found some DNA on the belt. If they find a match, they have a suspect. And Tessa asks about serial killers. A lot are creepy and antisocial, but there are some that are real family men. So basically, it could be anyone. Really, anyone could be a serial killer. As long as they have a reason for doing it, they are a serial killer. I mean, look at someone like Dexter. Dexter kills serial killers. Why? Because he wants serial killers gone. Now, I haven't seen Dexter the show, but I heard that's basically why. You know, he kills other serial killers. And uh, really, Dexter, you know, he's a crazy guy. He's also a family man, and he does care about his family, and basically, it's really showing that serial killers, you know, even family members who are kind and good-hearted can be killers, and I thought that was well done here. So Garrett acts creepier and creepier, he goes outside, he sharpens a huge knife on a rock, and then he literally shaves his beard with the knife, and I'm like, no, that's not normal, why are you shaving your beard with a knife, you just, why would you do that, that's just weird, and let to be fair, I'm glad he shaved because he literally looked like Tom Hanks in Castaway, so I'm glad he shaved or Robinson Caruso or something like that, but luckily he does shave. It's really weird overall. Cam and Tessa continue to do some research. The Silver Bells killing ended 14 years ago, right when Garrett left home, and it's very suspicious, but again, I'm gonna say right now, Garrett is definitely not the killer. It just seems too obvious, and Tess remembers how sweet Garrett was back then, but now he's really creepy, so clearly something's happened in that time. Either he's He's just acting weird because he hasn't been in the family in a while and he's just acting kind of off or something truly did happen that he doesn't want to talk about one of those two things definitely you know something had to have happened so Cam and Tessa ultimately show Allison the bells. She thinks it's some sort of prank or that her opponent planted them to ruin the campaign, but they show her that their newspaper was in the box, and Cam and Tessa think that it was their dad or Garrett, and Allison says they should just ignore until after the election. That could be the best thing to do, because it could ruin them all, really. And really, I get what Allison's trying to say. You know, she's so focused on her campaign, it could really ruin it, but Allison's talking, Cam notices his stash, so... Clearly, there's something going on there. Cam's then about to take the drugs when he hears Caramel. It's not good. And probably the most disturbing part of this episode is what we find out happens to Caramel. Because not only is Jack so sick and so just uh, weird, he's literally experimenting on the cat and cut its tail off. So... Basically, I mean, this kid, if he's not the serial killer, he's going to grow up to be a serial killer because this kid is very strange, he's very off, and again, it's just not normal at all, so that was really weird. So later, Cam visits, t tells Tessa that he's going to visit their parents, but he goes to see Sophie instead, and... Ugh. I, I don't care. I, I don't care about the storyline. I'm sorry. I don't care that he's with Sophie. I don't care that there's, you know, that she's a junkie and everything. I just don't care because I've seen the storyline so many times and they're not doing anything new with it. And Sophie really is no personality whatsoever, I have to say. I don't really think she had much personality. Uh, but after she checks on Jack, Tessa runs into Garrett. She finally asks why he left for so long and his answer is, I don't know. But if it weren't for you, I might have never come back here. So clearly... Something is going on where he had this deep hatred for the family except for Tessa. And Tessa asks if they're so bad, um, and he says that they're not. So Allison also talks to her daughters. They tell her that Garrett was mean to Mitchell at the hospital. He didn't say he missed and loved him. Instead, he said, I'm going to tell them it was you. So maybe Garrett left because he knew. But then we get a very crucial scene that I'm very happy the show did because it's probably my favorite scene in this episode. Um, basically... Back at the hospital, Mitchell tells Madeline that they need to tell the truth, and she basically tells him straight out to just rest, and that's all she, you know, she, he says, look, we need to tell what's going on, we need to admit what's happening. Clearly, he knows who the killer is, and she does as well, but she tells him to just rest, literally kills him right then and there, turns off his monitor, he's dead, and, uh, you know, basically, he's now, you know, his breathing tube and everything, he's now dead, and that is how this episode ends, so Madeline's killed Mitchell, that is how this episode ends, really crazy stuff overall, let's just get into this episode. So overall, I thought this was a really good premiere. Not a great premiere, but I thought it was a very strong premiere. There were a lot of things I thought were off about this premiere. First of all, a lot of these characters, I just don't really care about in the way they want them to, especially characters like Allison. I just find her as someone that wants a good campaign, or Cam. He's just someone that's struggling with, with you know, drugs or something like that. The only characters I found really interesting are Garrett, uh, Madeline, and, uh, you know, Garrett, Madeline, and, uh, you know, uh, Tessa. I found those characters really good. I really did enjoy them 
overall. Jack as well is a great character. I really am liking what they're doing with Jack. Mitchell clearly knew what was going on. It's clear that he covered this up. Like, he knew who the killer is, and they're trying to cover this up because probably Madeline is trying to cover this up for some reason. Now, let me just say that there really wasn't any standout in this episode. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, this person was amazing because there wasn't, this wasn't really, I think, a great acting premiere. I think everyone did a great job, but there's not really anyone that really stuck out to me. And, like, that's the scene. That is the scene that just is amazing because there really isn't one. I will say there are some very good actors in this show, like Justin Chatwin. Um, there's, you know, the girl, there's just, there's a lot of really good actors here. Uh, there's, um, I'm trying to think of who everyone is because there's a really good cast, like I said, uh, but there's not really a standout, I think. You know, this is not really a show where I'm like, oh, this person's amazing or, oh, this person's amazing. It's not really that kind of show. It's more like, you know, the cast is really good. Justin Chowen's really good. Megan Ketcher's really good in this show who, um, was in Jane the Virgin. She actually played Susanna, so I think that's really interesting. Um, you know, Megan Ketcher's really good, though. Virginia Madsen is really good. There's a really good cast here, definitely. I think everyone really did do a good job, but like I said, there just really is no standout to me. I think everyone's good, but there's not really, like, okay, they're the standout. Even Cornelia from The Nick is in the show. Really, there are a lot of great people in the show, and like I said, Gabriel Bateman from Outcast. There's a really great cast here. I think the best thing about this premiere really was was the directing and the screenplay, the way that, not the screen, the teleplay, the way that the writing, the way they revealed things to you so slowly, the way that they kind of told this story very slowly, I thought was very well done, that's something I definitely really enjoyed, and I think that was something that was one of the best things about this entire premiere, was the way they told this story. Uh, there's clearly something up with this family, we don't really know what it is, definitely there's something going on there, you know, who's the killer, what's going on, how long have they been the killer, why did Garrett leave, why is Jack so weird, these are things that I'm sure, and I hope that we are going to get answered, and they have told us that there is going to be a definitive answer by the end of the season as to who the killer is, which I'm very happy about. It's a 13-episode season. I don't know if this is a miniseries. I'm going to say that it's not, because every miniseries I say, oh, it's a miniseries, it ends up being, you know, uh, a full series. So I'm thinking this is not actually a miniseries. We'll have to see, though. The cinematography here I thought was really good. That was something I definitely really did enjoy. I think the cinematography was very well done. Uh, and the house in general, you definitely feel like the house, you know, it's really big. It's this, I don't like the way it's this perfect family, because it's not really a perfect family though here. This is a family that's been estranged, they're not really as close as they want to be, and that's something I think they showed really well here. Overall, guys, I really enjoyed this premiere. Not a perfect premiere by any means, but I still really did enjoy I think there were some really great things about it. Let me know what you guys thought of this first episode. Again, sorry it took me so long to view this first episode, but let me know what you guys thought of it. Love to hear your thoughts on it. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for the season finale of Game of Thrones, which I am so ready for. This has been an incredible season, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.